everybody, Carl Shu from Snorkel.tv, and today I want to give you guys a little bit of overview of the various ways that you can create buttons in Flash. Um, pretty much we're going to focus on the difference between simple buttons and movie clip buttons, and there are literally five different ways, if not more, that you can approach interactive elements that have over and mouse out states. Um, and for people just getting familiar with Flash, um, sometimes they really quickly run up against the wall of seeing the limits of simple buttons, and then people will recommend, oh, you should use movie clips instead. And they're like, well, why? So we're going to take a look at a few examples of the different ways to approach creating buttons in your Flash files. Now, I'm going to export this FLA that I have here, and let's just take a look. Here, I have literally five different symbols that respond to my mouse moving over them. And we're going to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each one and just show you how they're set up. So first off, we're going to start with the simple button. And the simple button is a special type of symbol in Flash that by its very nature responds to mouse events and it can, it's capable of showing you an overstate when you roll over the button and an down state when you press down on it. Um, they're very easy to make, um, thus the name simple button, but there are some uh, restrictions. So your basic simple button will work like this. When I roll over it, it will just simply change a state in an instant. So we're going from the, what's referred to as the up state to the over state. Now I'm scaling it very big just to accentuate the jump. And also when I roll off, the button immediately goes back to its up state. So we have our up, over, and off, and or back to up again. Now you can also put animations inside of simple buttons, like so. Now when I roll over, the change from small and blue to large and let's call it pink um, is animated. When I roll off, though, it snaps back to its normal up state. So here we have our cool animation inside the button. So let's take a little look at how these are made. So the first one, let's go to simple button. If we look at it in the properties panel, you will see that this symbol is behaving as a button. When I double click on the symbol to edit it, you'll see we have up, over, and down keyframes as well as hit. We're just going to deal with the up and over for now. So on this little mini timeline inside of this simple button, we can design our up state and our over state. And when we roll over the button, Flash will take care of jumping between these two frames, up and over. So there's no animation there. Um, let's go to this simple button with a nested movie clip. Now this one here, remember, there's an animation when I roll over. And it, we roll over and it animates. But when I roll off, it's a very big jump back to the up state. There's no animation back to up on the over. And that can look a little bit on the kludgy side, you know, just that snap is pretty horrible. But let me show you how this is made. We'll double click on this button. And in the over state, you'll see that, well, I don't see the symbol large and pink here, nor do I see any sort of sign of animation. Well, inside of this simple button, we have another symbol here called nested animation. Okay, and if I double click on that, you'll see that this is where the animation takes place. So we literally have an animated movie clip inside the overstate of the button. All right, so whenever I roll over, then that animation will play. And, you know, that's a pretty decent technique if you're just starting out. You know, you can get some good effects. And uh, the way these buttons work, you know, if we weren't scaling so much, that effect would be minimized, but that whole jump. But I really want to make it clear that you don't have to deal with that jump at all. So now comes into play our movie clip buttons, okay? These guys here are movie clips. This here is a movie clip, and this here is a movie clip. But you'll notice that when I test this movie, they all respond like buttons, meaning that when I roll over them, an animation plays, and when I roll off of them, aha, that's the big difference. We can animate on the way out. So we'll go up and then down, all right? So that's much smoother than this, boom, ah, it's just so brutal, it's horrible. And this, bang, bang, it's like getting hit in the face with a frying pan. 
Whereas now we have a smooth over animation and a smooth roll out animation. Now, both of these look identical, but there's a little bit of a glitch in the first one. And that is when I roll over it, and if I wait for it to get fully large and pink, it looks fine. But if I do something like this, notice that little glitch there? It automatically spazzes out to being fully big. Ooh, and that can happen too. So that's really not what we want to see. In this button, it's built a little bit smarter. That's why we call it the movie clip button with smart over and out animation. If it only grows a little bit, it always shrinks back to from ever where it was. From ever where it was, remember that, guys. This one, though, it always goes back from the large frame. So let's take a look at how these are made. We're going to close this Swift, and let's start with the first one. We're going to double click on this movie clip to edit it, and you'll see now that this movie clip has a pretty good advanced timeline set up. We have frame one where we just have that blue shape hanging out. There's also a stop action on this frame. And we have action script on the main timeline that says when you roll over this button, go play the over animation. And then when you roll out of the animation, it plays the out. So we have both the over animation and the out animation set up on the timeline here. And let's take a look at the script. All right, let's go to my actions frame and we'll go to frame number one. And here we're calling this good MC. We're saying that basically when you have a rollover, you're gonna call the good over function. So we tell that movie clip to play the over frame and then we play, tell it to play the out frame. Now the reason we had that little bit of a jump that I was demonstrating before is this. Let's jump into this clip. And it's possible that I could only roll over for a little bit of time and maybe it just grows slightly bigger. Well, the problem is once I'm maybe four frames into the tween, if I roll out, the code says, hey, jump to the out frame. So it instantly gets huge and then shrinks down. So the whole issue is if I roll out, when I'm just maybe halfway through the tween here, it jumps to being fully big and then rolls out. So it's not the best thing in the world. Now, if you really want to flex your muscles, what you can do is uh, approach it like this other button here. If I double click on it, you'll see that it's literally set up the same way. We have our over sequence and our out sequence. The difference is that the action script is a little bit smarter. Um, let's go back to scene one. This button here is called Better MC. So let's go to my actions and I'm going to go to the code for my Better MC. And it's a little bit different. We're still triggering the, triggering the over animation the same way, but on the out animation, instead of saying just go to and play that out frame, we have a little bit of math here. Now, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of it all, but basically what this equation here figures out is how to jump from a similar frame in the beginning tween to a similar frame in the ending tween. And this is better shown than talked about. So here, what that equation does is it says, you know, if I've scrolled up this much to frame 15, basically I'm five frames into this thing growing up. Well, that equation will take the playhead and take it to five frames on the way out. So if I'm on frame 20 and I roll off of this clip, it's automatically going to take me to frame 35 where it's in a... In, in, on a <laughs> Whoa, Carl, it's in an identical state on the way out. So there's no um, flare up or big blast coming at you. So remember the first button, what it did was it would play this far and then always jump to out where it would get big and then shrink down. And that looked a little bit cheesy. But now with this new equation, if we play to frame 15 and then roll off, it'll go to frame 40 where it looks the same and then shrink down. So we get a really smooth animation if I roll over just quickly. Now that looks really nice. This one here, whoa, horrible. It automatically jumps up and it's bad. So we built the button the same way, but the difference is that the action script that we had was just a little bit more advanced to figure out where to jump the playhead um, so that the out animation would be going from the same place that the symbol was. 
Again, I know it's a little bit weird, um, but it takes a lot of work sometimes to figure out these equations. And then if you change the timing, you have to change the equations. And if you're building lots of buttons in this fashion, um, literally for every button that you have, you have to, um, you know, build a new timeline and it's a little bit cumbersome. Now what we're seeing here in Flash is the fact that everything on my stage is now hidden. And this is just a bug in Flash CS4. I'm gonna go to view, preview mode, outlines. Oh, and there's all my stuff. And then go to view, preview mode, full, and everything comes back. Great job, Adobe, love you. All right, now, um, what we showed you with that little um, demonstration could be taken into something that looks really good. Let's go to my other file here. Whoops, filters interactive. Now, using that same technique, um, I've built some better looking buttons. Notice how when I roll over them, they flare up. You see the color, that glow comes in. And when you roll off, all those effects go back down. So we animate in and then we animate out. Now, this animation is happening so quick that if I roll over all of them, it still looks pretty good. All right. But you can see how this button effect that I have right here looks so much better than just a simple button changing drastically from one state to another. The fact that everything animates in and then animates out just makes your stuff look that much better. And these are all interactive. You know, nice little effect here. Really love it. So let me just show you that these buttons here are not simple buttons. They are the movie clip buttons that I just illustrated to you. So if I double click on this symbol here, you'll see again we have our over animation, keep your eye up here too, and then we have the out, where everything just goes back down. And yes, it's a little bit more work than a simple button, but you can get much better effects. Now the only trouble here is that for each of these symbols on the main timeline, you have to build out all these frames, and if you had 20 or 30 different uh, thumbnails that you wanted to treat this way, you know, it's going to be a lot of work. And then if you ever have to, say, change the timing, um, you had to do it in all of your different symbols because they all have their own precise nested timelines. Now, this is definitely a good way to start, but, you know, once you start realizing the limitations of this method, we're going to go to the super awesome method. And check this out. The super awesome single frame button works very well. You roll over, you roll out, over, out, and it shrinks. If I roll over quick, it does the same thing. There's no jump. It automatically scales back down from wherever it scaled up to. And that's the kind of stuff that we want, this nice little buttery effect. And the beauty of this symbol here is this. Let's go close this. This guy right here is a movie clip called Background Solid. This guy right here, okay? And this clip, if I double click on it, is just a solid shape. There's no nested animation at all. There's no keyframes to build. There's no frame labels. There's no crap, all right? It's just a solid shape. The reason this works is because it's all being controlled by, take a guess, you in the front. Oh, you're right, Queen Max, there it is. So. Let's check out my action script for this guy named Awesomest MC. And you'll see here in the actions frame, boom, 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 let's scroll down. When you roll over Awesomest, you do a tween max up to a certain point. You scale up to 1.5 scale. Then when you roll out, it scales down from wherever it was scaled up to back to one. And that's all it takes. Now this method here is very easy to apply to multiple clips. I always say, what if you're doing 10 movie clips, 100 movie clips, blah, blah, blah. Well, let's go to this little file right here. And here I have these really nice playful buttons, or really movie clips that I can roll over and they go up and down, up and down, up and down. And when I roll across, it all looks very nice. All right, well, how was this built? Oh, there must be a lot of animation in here. There must be a lot of action script. Nope, there isn't. Let's go to my actions layer and literally all the code is right here. That's great. Um, this is all it is. Two functions and they target every individual clip inside of that movie clip. We have some stuff to assign the event listeners and to also get the hand cursor effect. 
Damn, 15 minutes. I gotta go.